I've made very few purchases in my life that I am as passionate about as the one that I put on the roof of my house when I bought my solar system. Not that solar system. That solar system. You see, last year I paid a decent amount of money and had a 14.4 kilowatt solar array installed on the roof of my house. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the components of that system. I'm gonna talk about how much I paid for it, how much the cost comes out monthly as well as the overall cost, and ultimately why I did it. I truly believe in solar and I truly believe that it is the way of the future. And if you're looking to save some money on your energy bill, this is the way to do it. So stick around, let's talk about solar. And in this week's edition of Don't Burn the House Down, I'm gonna show you why I made the investment to go solar. My solar system is comprised of 45 REC panels. Uh, that are rated at 320 watts a piece. Each panel has an Enphase IQ7 Plus micro inverter attached to it as well. The array number one over the garage is made up of 15 panels arranged in a little bit of a unique layout to maximize sun input. Array number two is located on the right hand side of the screen on top of the main roof. This is 23 panels and array number three is running along the far left hand side of the screen that is the additional seven panels. These 45 panels that are 320 watts each combine to make 14.4 kilowatts at maximum output. This is what the outside of my house looks like with the panels up on the roof. The panels themselves come down conduit and into this main box right here. And if I don't fall and kill myself. Inside the box, we have several different breakers. The breakers on the right hand side, these go to the solar panels themselves. The panels are in three different arrays and you can kill each one of them individually if you want to. So you could shut down array number one, array number two, or array number three. This goes to the end phase IQ combiner, which you can shut down separately. That is what talks to the internet. That is uh, what uh, ties into the app and uh, combines everything to send it down the pipe which then goes into your master shutdown. If you ever need to work on the system or work on the house, you throw this handle tunk, and the whole thing shuts off immediately. The last step is your photovoltaic meter, the PV meter. This is a separate meter from the meter that's on the house. And this just shows you output of the solar system. Now, I, I'm honestly not 100% sure of what all these things mean, but I know the numbers on it tend to cycle uh, every couple of seconds. They show you the total output of the system and they show you what it's currently producing. So right now, this is showing 4,031 watts, uh, if I am remembering how I read that correctly. And if I check my app, maybe it'll show me the same thing. Yeah, it's kind of close. This is about 3,800 watts. So. This is what shows your total output currently, uh, just just for your, your solar system. And then this goes inside to the main panel in the house. Now, what comes out of the main panel of the house goes into your actual electric main. And this is what's called a net meter. This net meter, depending upon the time of day, goes uh, both directions. So if you see the lines at the very bottom, they're going towards the house. That means that it is currently taking, um, we're actually putting electricity back into the grid right now. Those are going into the grid. If those two lines at the very bottom would be going the opposite direction, that means we would be pulling from the grid. So we're currently exporting to the grid. <clears throat> now, when I say this thing spins backwards, obviously it's kind of a metaphor or figure of speech because it's digital. There, there's no actual spinning little disc in this guy. Uh, but when we start to consume more than we use, those dots at the bottom go the opposite direction. And we, when we are overproducing, it goes the opposite direction. Those numbers will climb and they will fall depending upon how much we're using. So at the end of the month, when Excel comes out and reads my meter or digitally reads my meter, this thing will show how much we either consumed or how much we sent back into the grid. And then I get billed for or a check for the net difference. So inside at the main, we have a bunch of different stickers. You're gonna find these everywhere talking about, this is a dual power source, there's a photovoltaic system, 
uh, you know, don't try to work on anything in the house without killing that first, because even if you shut off the main, you could still get a zap from the, uh, the solar panels. So the solar panels come into the main at the very top here with one breaker. So if I ever needed to work on the house or on the solar, this is a 16 amp breaker, boom, shut that off, and the panels stop dumping electricity into the main. If we're overproducing, the electricity goes from here, it goes in through all the breakers that feed the house, and anything left over goes back out through the main, uh, and that's how we get net metering. Obviously then when the inverse happens and we start using more than we're producing, we start drawing from the main, it comes back up, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's how kind of the electricity combines, and uh, that's how it comes into your main. And anything that we're not using goes back out, and we get, we get paid for it. There are many different reasons why somebody would want to go solar. Maybe you want to save some money or do something good for the environment. For me, it was both. The upfront purchase cost of my system was $54,000. Now, that's a big number right off the bat, but there's a lot of other numbers that play into that as well. Uh, last year, there was a 30% federal tax rebate for solar system installation. So for me, that took $16,200 off, uh, which I got back in my taxes. I've already done my taxes. I used half the credit this year. I'll use half the credit next year, but I'm eventually going to recoup that cost of $16,200, which brings that purchase price down to $37,800. Okay, so we're at $37,800. <clears throat> now, within Excel uh, Energy, in, in the, the area where I live, I get what's called uh, solar rewards. They pay me seven cents for every kilowatt hour I produce, regardless of whether I use it or whether I sell it back to them. At the end of the year, I get a check for that. My solar installer predicted that my system would generate about enough uh, kilowatt hours throughout the year to generate a check of about 1200 bucks. And this is gonna last for 10 years. So if I get $1,200 a year in solar rewards, that then brings that purchase price down to about 25,800. So my purchase price is about $25,800 after rebates and rewards. Okay, that's one cost. The second cost is the monthly cost. My electric bill averaged about $250 a month, and that's breaking down an entire year divided by 12. I have replaced that with a, a payment of $170 a month. The 170 is what my solar loan is, okay? So right away, I'm saving $80 a month. Instead of paying 250, I'm paying 170. That's assuming that I produce as much energy as I need and I don't get a check from Excel and I don't get a bill from Excel. So right away, I'm saving roughly 80 bucks a month. That actually is going to be a lot better because so far my system has overproduced pretty dramatically. In August, I had a half a month where my system was actually turned on. And in that time, I was able to wipe out my electric bill entirely uh, and generate a credit. So for a half a month of my system being on, I got a $26 credit as opposed to a $250 bill. In September, I got a $56 credit. In October, I got a $46 credit. November, I finally broke even as my electric usage went up and the daylight hours were, were rapidly diminishing. December, I saw a bill from Excel for 80 bucks. In January, I saw a bill from Excel for 40 bucks. So far in February, uh, we're about eight days into my billing cycle and I'm currently at a $5 credit uh, according to my Sense app. What that means is that there are two months of the winter months where I did not produce enough to pay my electric bill, but uh, I'm gonna be coming out of that, it should be by the end of this month. That means for the remaining 10 months of the year, I should see a $0 electric bill and very, very, very likely a decent sized check from Excel as the solar hours get longer, my usage goes down, uh, I should be seeing some pretty good checks coming in from Excel. So for the first five and a half months that I've owned the system, my electric bill has been at negative $8. If you take the credits and what they've charged me and wash those out. So the last thing I'll talk about uh, within the, the calculation for money here is something that is unique to my situation, but still may apply to yours. And that is the PMI insurance that I was paying on my mortgage. PMI insurance uh, is if you get a mortgage for more than 80% of the uh, value of your home, you have to pay insurance on that that says by default, this insurance company will pay that gap in, in mortgage to equity. Now, 
I was at about 85% when I got my solar system installed, but the added value that the system brought to my home, I was actually able to eliminate my PMI off my mortgage about five years early. So I called them up, I had an appraisal done, they said, yep, your value's gone up because of the system. That saved me $120 a month in PMI payments that are gone. So if I look at the fact that I went for a $250 electric bill, I swapped that out for a $170 loan payment, that right there was an $80 savings. I'm now saving an additional $120 because of my PMI. I am $200 net positive each month because I installed the solar panels. So it was a huge financial success for me, and that's not even including any overgeneration, which is gonna happen pretty much 10 months out of the year. So now the question becomes, should you go solar? For me, it's a resounding yes. I mean, I wish I would have done this years ago. It, it put $200 back into my pocket every single month. Again, not including the overproduction. It's better for the environment. It uh, helps relieve my carbon footprint. And it's pretty cool to actually track the usage and the production throughout the day. As a data geek, I really dig that kind of stuff. Now I will say that if you finance your system like I did, your mileage will vary a little bit because you are gonna have added costs um, to the financing on your loan. If I would have paid cash, my break even on this system would have been about 8.5 years. Because I financed it, it comes out to about 10 and a half years. So in 10 and a half years, I'll be cash positive on my solar system. Uh, but every single day and every single month that I have it, I'm cash positive in my budget. So it makes sense for me regardless. I will also say that I live in Minnesota. Excel Energy has really generous solar rewards and, and they're a huge fan of solar electricity. The energy that I produce and send back to them is the same price as what I purchase from them. So your mileage may vary depending upon where you live and who your electric provider is. Do that research before you pull the trigger, but if you have a pretty solar friendly electric company, absolutely go for it. The last thing that I will tell you is this. Adding a solar system onto your house is a huge investment and it's a very long-term investment. Uh, the warranties on the panels and the inverter are 20 years. So you wanna make sure that the installer you choose to put them on is gonna be around in 20 years. Do your research and go with the company that you know and trust. I made the mistake of going with the company that I thought was gonna be the quicker version, uh, the, you know, the quicker to install, and I bypassed the company here in the Twin Cities that I really should have gone with because they are pushed out several months. I ended up getting burned by this company because they are now out of business and they kind of took some of my money that I never got back. So moral of the story, go with the company that you trust. If you live in Minnesota or Wisconsin or the Dakotas or Iowa, go with All Energy Solar. They are out of the Twin Cities, they're based out of St. Paul. I think they also have stuff on the East Coast as well, but check out All Energy Solar first. They took over my project and have worked very closely with me, providing great customer support, even though I wasn't initially a client of theirs. So they are A-plus rated on Better Business Bureau. Uh, they've also got amazing Google reviews. So if you can, go with All Energy Solar. Otherwise, do your homework and go with the right provider for you. I do have a link in the description below uh, for All Energy Solar with a guy that I work with closely. So if that's who you choose to go with, have him come out and talk to you. He'll go through your electric bills and decide if solar is truly right for you. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it gives you some insight as to what it means to own a solar system. If people ask me, well, do you regret it? Would you do it again? I would absolutely do it again, a hundred times over and I wish I would have done it sooner. $200 a month in my pocket is nothing to sneeze at. Not to mention the fact that when I finally pay this thing off in a couple years, I'm gonna be making a lot more money than that. So go solar, go green, get some green back in your pocket and do something good for the environment. Thanks for watching.